You're listening to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official podcast of Lingerie Fighting Championships. And now, here's your host, Michael Larkin! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. My name is Mike Larkin, and folks, February 24th, circle the date in your calendars, LFC 39, Goddess Among Us, Secrets Hideaway Spa and Resort, Kissimmee, Florida, making her debut on the card, finally, like it's CeCe Peniston back in the 90s, the one, the only, I bow to you, ma'am, Queen Gia Love is making her debut against Paris Love. Gia, how you feeling? The time has finally arrived. Thank you so much, Michael. I'm so excited. I have been talking to Sean with this literally no less than two years about getting me a match in lingerie fighting championship. And it's been touch and go, and it's never been a lack of interest. It, I guess it's been a uh, location uh, issue for the most part. I'm in the East Coast. Most of their shows are in the West Coast, but for the first time, LFC has done or is doing a show. LFC 39, Goddess Among Us, as you said, Secrets Hideaway in Kissimmee, Florida. We're doing our first Florida show, and we're really excited. I get to fight with no other than the Barbie badass Paris Love. No love lost in the fight with me, Queen Gia Love, the mighty mob monarch. This fight is going to be epic. We've both been in this a long time. We've got the same fan base. We are dedicated to our craft, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to give our all on those mats. Oh, I'm already anticipating the excitement. And I mean, I look at it from a stance like this, from the st- work that y'all have done with cat fighting and fetish modeling and everything that goes into the entertainment industry. I think a lot of fans are going to be not only just excited and really pumped up for it, but the fact that you two have such great chemistry elsewhere and you're intertwining and taking it to the LFC rankings. I think everybody's going to be in for something special like this card. I mean, I'll pull it up for everybody so everybody can check this out because let's be honest here. folks. Yes, please. Oh, my goodness. Here we are. Look at this beautiful card. Goddess Among Us, main evented by Bella Madison and Sheena Bathory. The debut of Tracy Nix, who we've seen in Shine Wrestling and on AEW. Kate against Katie the Bombshell Forbes. Bianca Blanche making her debut. Bianca Blanche against Mia Annabella, who we've seen in LFC during the Sturgis events. Jenny Bloody Valentine against Bella Inc. The debut of Avery Ryder against Bella Rockefeller. And, of course, my guest here, Queen Gia Love and Paris Love. I'm hyped. Like, I think from everybody can see here, just this card from top to bottom, debuts, surprises, and everything in between. This is what LFC is all about. This uh, is a stunning roster of impeccable talent. I know and have worked with most of these girls personally, and I'm excited to see them again for this event and put something together that's going to keep fans coming back for more and wanting to see more from us and watch us grow in this industry as athletic entertainers. I look at it from a stance like this. When you have LFC fights and LFCfights.com, the VIP section, everywhere from your pay-per-view streaming for your video on demand. And I got to give you kudos because Women's Athletes on Fire is now. You can check that event on many different streaming platforms and video on demand. Like, it's really great to see this entertainment, this industry from Lingerie Fighting Championships, Women's Athletes on Fire, these empowering organizations for such amazing and talented women really coming to life. And you being featured in LFC as well as Women's Athletes on Fire, that's a big deal for you because it's just more exposure for the queen and now more people can bow down to to some amazing royalty it does of course add to my power michael no one is surprised it is part of the ultimate plan spreading the awareness of their queen they are already worshiping me they just forgot and i'm here to remind them 
that they should have been worshiping me the whole time. And it's well in motion and I'm very excited about it. The track, like the, I, the traction that I've been getting so far with LFC women athlete on fire. It's, it's amazing. I like stunned honestly, but it feels like the effort that I'm putting into it is actually paying off the, the effort that I'm able, because it really does feel like most of the time that I am just sitting behind a screen, marketing, answering emails, not getting to really do a lot of the performing that I really want to do and trying to get that all together and really deliver more for my fans in the form of content, live shows, coming on shows like this with you and sharing what I've got going on and how more we can get involved because I'm excited just to create and give everyone something that they want to see and have a great time while doing it and, you know, be a little mischievous about it. But in this case, I am baby face for our match. So Paris gets the pleasure of playing the villain for this show and it gets interesting i'm going to pull up this photo here so everybody else can check this one out because again there's a lot of special photos going into these amazing bouts as gia love just mentioned here let's look at this photo right here you and paris love it's all sweet it's all nice here and shout out to chris silvio and booty camp orlando death proof dojo the training in here i know you guys are going to be working hard to put on and apply your craft in spectacular fashion but this right here says it all if you're not excited for this bout look at these two amazing and gorgeous women with such amazing talents both with their overall foundation i think right here sums it up right here outside of the ring friends but god dang it when you go into there it's foes and it's competition and it's ready to rip ass and take names all over lfc 39 we're definitely there to showcase both of our talents but at the end of the match only one of us can win and it's it's just a fact the winner gets more eyes and we could all use more eyes that we do and i mean i look at it from a stance too like this I think both of you ladies, and I'm going to say this for everybody, if you've not checked out LFC, you are in for a treat because we've gone from Las Vegas. We've gone to Sturgis. We've gone to so many places. But when you're going to Florida Flow Rida, which has become the wrestling capital of the world, you think of NXT, you think of the old school Florida championship wrestling with Dusty Rhodes and Eddie Graham. There's such a rich history in the great state of Florida that really showcases a lot of great combat and great art forms. I think for LFC to be a part of this and just in general for the overall combat of Florida, what a time. And plus, can you really go wrong with the Sunshine State? You really can't. Everyone wants to be here, and it's been an increasing trend. Everyone wants to come to Florida. The wrestlers have loved Florida for years. Hogan's made a home base here. There's more that I can't remember currently, but uh, I know that I've seen them. There's some that are local, and everyone just wants to be here. The, the weather's fantastic. The beaches are right there. The entertainment's rampant. This is where to be. I got to ask you as well, because we talk about the training and everything that goes into it, but besides the fundamentals and besides the precision, so to speak, that goes into your work, into your craft, the lingerie side of things, the L of lingerie fighting championships, first and foremost, you rock it every time with the purple, you rock it every time with the cosplay. What can we expect from the lingerie side of things? Because the moment you step through that curtain, it's showtime, it's go time, and the entrance really brings out the overall representation of your presentation. So Gia Love, not to give too many sports away but what can we expect from this lingerie man well we already know that i will be sporting my royal purple that mm -hmm. is without a doubt i have a couple of options that i'm going to pick through i have not narrowed it down i'm going to figure out which one i feel really accentuates my figure and also won't have any accidents i think we're we're Avoiding accidents, trying to make sure that, or maybe that's part of the appeal. I'm not sure. But whichever one that fits me the best, I'm going through at least four different. And I will reveal that there will be a robe. 
So we can all look forward to a robe reveal presentation. Classic, very, it, it gives me Ric Flair and Charlotte Flair coming out yes. there basically with the robe and the, the majesty of it. I got to say, I love that you bring that comparison in there. It's like Rick and Charlotte Flair mixed with like Gorgeous George where you're just flinging the stuff out there. It's very old school bygone era mixed with today's new school and representing from the 80s until onward. I think that's a great like fit that really goes into your character. And I think as well, if you really look at it from the stance of your royalty, your queenness, your overall queendom, if you will, I think the overall royalty also great accentuates the great message of that all women are queens. So, hey, why not really showcase that, right? That's really one of the, I like to think that I'm trying to deliver with the character. I don't have her a hundred percent like nailed down, but that's that's as you said, kind of where I'm leading with it. Uh, uh, a bit of female empowerment with uh, a villainous cheekiness, but an overall like kindness towards all. So like definitely. Like anti-hero is the way that I like to describe it more than anything because I'm I'm not solid on either camp because ultimately I I serve me and those that serve me. That's that's just how it is. I like the term anti-hero because I remember when Paige, for those that know Soraya, who's currently in AEW now, when she was in WWE and NXT, that's how she kind of derived herself because you had, like you mentioned, the Charlotte Flairs and you had all these great, beautiful women. But she's like, okay, I'm going to rock the leather jacket. I got the brunette hair. I'm just going to go out there and be edgy. I got the piercings. I'm the anti-hero. I'm the anti-diva, if you will. Not something that's the, what you consider to be the norm, but you're going outside the box. And I think in your case, I think you've always showcased within your cosplay and your overall outfits and attires you have to be creative you have to be authentic you have to be genuine because that really entices and evokes the emotions from the audience i hadn't thought about it exactly like that mostly because i do have that background in cosplay and right. uh being a fan of comic books anime since i gotta say middle school with pokemon uh playing um Nintendo game. So I guess a lot of early exposure to Japanese culture and being wrapped up in that Dragon Ball, uh, the the costuming of it and just feel, or playing a lot of the fighting games are very reminiscent to like Street Fighter, very anime, Guilty Gear, very Tekken, very anime. And that just being one of the things that I was drawn to. And wanting to get into ballet, but that being um, something that will like not really available, I guess, to me at my age, where I was in um, gymnastics, the same thing, wanting to be in gymnastics, but not being able to do that at my age. So now being able to actually fund it, getting into a form of gymnastics and ballet, in wrestling <laughs> of all things but also combining my love for costuming and anime and japanese culture and all that all together and just having fun with it and delivering that and being like hey do you like this uh, this is fun for me i hope you like it too <laughs> <laughs> the best way I can really surmise what you're saying and what I love about that too is again all these create you're mixing the element of popular culture and the professional wrestling I love it because we see that with everything that we do and every art form that we apply in this thing that we call life so pretty much folks what Gia Love is saying here is and I'll use the Street Fighter reference you are looking to Hadouken Paris Love when it comes to LFC 39 Goddess Among Us you were looking to catch them all like ah, a Pokemon you're uppercut. yep <laughs> And I love that. And I mean, speaking of cosplaying, folks, I'd like to pull up another image here for the fine people here on this podcast. Let's pull it up right here, folks. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Do, 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 ba, ba. There we go. We got to talk about this. Kill City Cup, baby. There is you and Mason X. I love this. It reminds me very much of Lucha Underground meets horror meets Comic-Con versus. That, that's how I say it. Lucha I love Underground. It. 
Yes, I love it because it reminds me, and I love your character too, of Queen G, of course. You got Mr. X, you got Killer X, you got everything from Brian Cage to Jimmy Jacobs to April Hunter to Matt Seidel, many characters that we've seen in professional wrestling from WWE, AEW, and Impact Wrestling, and many different auspices coming together to form such an amazing event mixed with cosplaying, like we mentioned, Horror Lucha Underground. It's a soap opera, but it's everything and more that really brings it out here. So I wanted to ask you about Kill City Cup because I saw the presentation on youtube i like the presentation as a whole let us know what this is all about i love how the creator describes it and how he was advertising it when we were at megacon earlier this month the worst wrestling movie ever and that would make me feel like oh no like don't say it like that but the amount of appeal that would like it would draw people hearing that the worst wrestling movie what do you what do you mean and then we presented and it was so much fun being at that convention and sharing this wacky project that we threw together. Like you said, Lucha Underground and the way he likes to describe it, WWE meets Motor Combat. And now we're finding a fan base among horror. And I didn't expect that going into this i never thought horror but it's so obvious so getting more involved in the horror scene uh the film has already won several awards submitting it to a lot of uh film festivals getting it out there to the audience and it it's it's a fun ride like like you said for people that don't know lucha underground it's more of a fantastical approach to wrestling in the way that I would say in a Megacon, America's most badass tournament. They got blood, we got fire, death, soul stealing, fireballs. It's it's got it's people get hung upside down. Like it's wacky, it's fun, it's campy, it's wrestling like you've never seen before. And on top of that, the wrestling is so good on a technical aspect we've got we got brian cage we got evan Bourne, matt seidel uh we got april hunter like you said earlier uh mason x uh, uh, hmm. uh natalia markova of course yep. who does amazing in that brian brian uh cars Yep. Amazing was in uh, Netflix Outlast. So it's a start studded cast, amazing pro wrestlers, and it's it's a fun ride. Like WWE meets Motor Combat. Just check it out. YouTube, Kill City Cup, super easy. One hour. It's it's wrestling like you've never seen before. And don't think that the pro wrestling isn't good because it is. They, they really do bring some of their best stuff there. Man, I like how you put that, too, because I remember back in the MTV days, like mid-2000s, like MTV used to host Wrestling Society X, which Matt Seidel was a part of as well. Like it was wrestling on pretty much mixed with like that ECW meets cinema type of vibes. Like there were fireballs. There was a lot of big explosions. But what I like about this, too, as well is, I mean, some people will be like, okay, this is not the professional wrestling I'm used to. But I'm like, I watched the validity. I watched the Christmas of what they do in the ring. Like look at ECW back in the day. Yes, there was a lot of blood blood and hardcore and plunder, but then you had the likes of your Dean Malenko's, your Eddie Guerrero's, your Chris Jericho's, your two cold Scorpios. So there was a variety and a mix with everything. And I think you need to have that variety in professional wrestling. I mean, death matches may not be a cup of tea for a lot of people, but it's a very popular market in today's day and age that you see with GECW, Game Changer Wrestling. So hardcore does have a place in professional wrestling. Would I say all the time? No, but at the same time, man, this is a product for everyone. I mean, it's an easy watch to sit through one hour of amazing entertainment from the segments and everything you have to have people hooked it's the subtleties the intricacies the nuances that go into said product and i think kill city cup really exudes and accentuates that you're 100 right it really does deliver on something that you've never experienced before and it's worth the watch and on top of that we're coming out with a part two found out literally today in a couple of months so jump on killcitycup.com today what not you know watch the first episode and then in two months 
we'll have the second episode. And I'm excited because I had no idea. I just found out part two because there's a, a lot of content was filmed and what was released in part one is just like a bit of what was filmed. It was two days of filming. So I'm really excited and everyone else should be very excited. I will say this, folks. If you've not checked out Gia Love from the LFC front, from the Kill City Cup aspect, from even just, I'll put this out here, your cat fighting ability from everything that we've seen with Sushi Event and everything that you've done from the overall fetish side of things and the content creation, like Diana Disruption, get your sponsors out, man. March, I believe y'all are doing the damn thing, March 2nd. Yo. That is actually canceled. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. No, that. Okay. okay, yeah, so uh, for people that we're interested in that we apologize this isn't uh anything that happened with little rampage or myself uh diane's partner said no go on that was not comfortable i don't know the specifics i just know that it was a no-go from the partner so diane is out and that match is no longer happening unfortunately and i am bummed about it to say the least i was really excited about this i haven't done a cat fight since i believe november so i was stoked to get back into it i, I will say this though and I, i've always said this about you like you mentioned little rampage for those who've not checked out her content she is another one that goes out there and really is just again we talk about a cutie beauty she's one of the ones that really goes in and puts her overall forefront in so i'm gonna say I do hope that bout does happen in the future with you and Diana because she's another one that really showcases it. I think what a lot of people can get from the community is, even if it doesn't happen, I think in time it definitely will happen, and I can't wait to see what the future unholds for all three of you. Something will definitely happen. Uh, Rampage is not giving up. She's going to keep trying to find me an opponent. That would be amazing. I'm ready and open for someone that would want to do a cat fight. You know, let's get that in the works. I'd like that to happen. She, she'd like to get more involved in creating in the production of cat fights. She wants to do more of them in the wrestling ring. So, you know, getting to deliver that to the fans and see how they feel about it. Most cat fights are in a living room. So maybe introducing a new setting and environment might be refreshing or change some, change some things up. We'll see, but uh, uh, it's going to happen. Don't worry. I'm positive there'll be a, another cat fight for me th sometime this year. Just nothing in the books right now since Diane canceled on the cat fight. I will say this. When it comes to the body worship side of things, and I will say this, I think whether it's smothering, whether it's whatever thing that you're into, and I say this with everybody, everybody is so unique, right, with their preferences and everything. I think what I always admire about you ladies, not just your overall skills that kills, if you will, replace the S, put in the Z. I do enjoy the fact that there's something for everybody from the preferences side of things. And I think you bring that in every girl who's done LFC session girls, what have you. I think it's a great community. And I think I just have to put that over once more. The community is out there for everyone. And I love the interaction it brings and it brings people like you and I together. So I got to say, I got to thank you and all the ladies for doing what you do. And we got to thank you for giving us the space to be able to connect with people like yourself and be able to share with everyone all that is involved in putting these shows together and really giving the audience something they've never seen before and excite them at the same time with powerful, stunning women that are, <laughs> are no joke, like real contenders, real athletes, and a force to be watched. Beautifully stated and eloquently stated. And I'm going to say this to you, Miss Gia Love. I will definitely have you back on after your, your fight with Paris Love after this amazing event takes place, folks. Next Saturday, February 24th, Secrets Hideaway Spa and Resort, Kissimmee, Florida. Go out of your way. I put up the card one more time. Such an amazing lineup. The return of Bella Rockefeller, the debut of Avery Ryder, the debut of the Queen, Gia Love and Paris Love, the debut of Bianca Blanche, the return of Mia Annabella, Jenny Bloody Valentine and Bella ain't going at it for the first time. The debut of Tracy Nixon, the return of Katie the Bomb. 
bombshell Forbes coming off her last bat at LFC 38 Angels and Little Devils against Bella Madison, who is main eventing against Sheena Hungarian Hurricane Bathory for the third time. Oh, you do not want to go out of your way. You do not want to miss this. Go out of your way. Watch it. Enjoy it. Love it. And just spread the word because we are here to stay. And Gia Love, before we close this out, you are on all forms of social media, man. The Instagram. I am on Twitter. every single form of social media. Let us media. know where we can follow you, man. And I've made it very, very, very easy for everybody. So we all know me, Queen Gia Love. And I got GiaLove.com. That's G-I-A-L-O-V-E.com. Right there in the very, very top of the page are the icons for every single social media. You pick your favorite. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, slash X. I'm even on Tumblr. Click it. Follow me. I'm not looking at the messages. You're going to have to email me for that. And it's all on glove.com. Just below the social media links, there's all my videos, all my travel dates, where you can find me, my events where you can meet up with me and where you can book me for your shows or to meet me privately. I'm available for all kinds of stuff. Make sure that you find me on gialove.com. I'm even on Snapchat. I know a lot of people like that Snapchat still. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm on all the platforms. So if it's, if it's queen Gia love, it's me. Oh, I love your style and I like your style. There's a social media platform from everybody. You should follow this woman because you know why? Royalty and number two, she's a badass follow and a cool ass chick. And I mean that with the utmost sincerity and respect to you, Miss Love. And folks, LFCfights.com. Go out of your way. Watch LFC 38 Angels and Little Devils. Watch LFC 39 Goddess Among Us, which will be on the site as well. The VIP section is where it's at. LFCfights.com is where it's at. To see yours truly, myself, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance podcast, Tommy Bell Art, Sketchy and Funny, the LFC Exposed Reality Series. It is a content extravaganza, bonanza, a couchamon, if you will. And oh my goodness gracious, before we do close this out and I do my final plugs, you miss GLF, Paris Love. Do you have any final words before we get into this bout next Saturday night? Things that I want to personally address to Paris myself. We are friends. At the foundation of everything, we've always worked well together. We will continue to work well together. But this is a match and this is real. And I would love extra eyes on me. So when it comes down to it, love you, but I'm going to win. Beautifully, eloquently, and bluntly stated. And folks, as I always say with this show, life is an art form and we are all applying our crafts and Gia Love and all these amazing women and all of you apply your crafts in amazing fashion. And as the title of the show says, much like my mindset beauty strength and dominance the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are and miss gia love queen gia love i include you in those sentiments thank you so much for your time thank you so much michael
flexing.